1997, a helicopter arrives at a Middle Eastern compound, where a group of men capture a leader believed to be a terrorist. One of the men, known as Harry Hart or Galahad, threatens the terrorist to extract information. Suddenly, the captive reveals a grenade pin in his mouth. Another man, Lee, heroically leaps onto the terrorist to shield the others from the impending explosion, sacrificing his life in the process. Following this tragic incident, the remaining members of the group, Merlin and Lancelot, remove their disguises. Harry warmly welcomes Lancelot to join the Kingsman organization. In the aftermath, Harry visits Lee's wife, Michelle, to inform her of her husband's death and presents her with a Medal of Honor, featuring a number on the back for any future assistance. He instructs her to use a specific phrase, Oxford's not brogues, to identify herself in case of needing help. Michelle declines the medal, prompting Harry to approach Lee's son, Gary Eggsy, and pass the medal on to him. In Argentina, after 17 years, Professor James Arnold finds himself held captive by a gang of criminals. A knock on the door alerts the thugs, who are met by Lancelot. In the ensuing confrontation, Lancelot defeats the thugs, even enjoying a drink afterward. However, a second knock interrupts the moment, leading Lancelot to open the door only to be ambushed by Gazelle, a woman with razor-sharp prosthetic legs working for the billionaire Richmond Valentine. Together, Valentine and Gazelle release Arnold and bring him along with them. In London, Harry visits a tailor shop that serves as a front for the Kingsman headquarters, meeting with Merlin and their leader, Arthur. They express their sorrow over Lancelot's passing and uncover connections between his death and previous incidents in Uganda and Chechnya. Meanwhile, we find Eggsy, now in his early 20s, residing with his mother, her new husband Dean, and Eggsy's infant sister in a rundown apartment, struggling with financial instability. Eggsy goes to a pub with friends, only to encounter Dean's group of henchmen. The henchmen intimidate them before Eggsy confesses to his friends that he stole the henchmen's car keys. They take the car for a joyride before encountering the police. In a daring move, Eggsy reverses the car down the streets until colliding with another vehicle. Despite facing repercussions, Eggsy takes the blame and refuses to betray his friends, leading to his arrest and a potential 18-month prison sentence. Turning to the medal around his neck, Eggsy recalls the code phrase, Oxford's not brogues, and calls the number engraved on the back. Moments later, Harry bails him out of trouble. Harry and Eggsy head to the pub where Dean's henchmen confront Eggsy once again. Despite Harry's calm request for them to depart, the leader of the henchmen shows disrespect and orders Harry to leave instead. Unfazed, Harry takes action by locking the front door, emphasizing the importance of manners with the phrase, manners mocketh man. Using his umbrella, he swiftly incapacitates the main thug with a glass and proceeds to efficiently defeat the remaining henchmen, even causing some of them to turn on each other. Surprising Eggsy, Harry then pats him on the shoulder before departing, requesting Eggsy to keep their encounter and Harry's capabilities confidential. Eggsy comes back home, and Dean aggressively confronts him about what happened with his friend's car. Michelle tries to step in but is pushed away. Harry overhears the argument through a microphone he placed on Eggsy's shoulder. Speaking into the device, Harry warns Dean to release Eggsy or else he'll report Dean's crimes to the authorities. Eggsy escapes the flat and eludes Dean's henchmen once more. Following Harry's suggestion, Eggsy heads to the tailor shop where he finds Harry. Harry proposes that Eggsy consider joining the Kingsman organization. Eggsy, feeling like he has nothing to lose, agrees and accompanies Harry underground to a shuttle that takes them to meet other recruits. Eggsy quickly becomes friends with a girl named Roxy, but faces teasing from a boy named Charlie and his friends. Meanwhile, Harry encounters Professor Arnold on his way to class and questions him about his captors. Arnold reacts with pain, causing his head to explode suddenly. Two thugs enter the building, prompting Harry to detonate a hand grenade before leaping out of a window. He is injured in the explosion and falls into a coma. Valentine learns of Arnold's demise and decides to investigate who is inquiring about their activities. While the recruits are asleep, water begins to fill the room. All the recruits, except Eggsy, swim to the toilets to retrieve pipes and place them there to create air pockets. Despite his efforts to open the door, Eggsy is unable to do so. He decides to break the mirror, allowing the water to flow into the adjacent room where Merlin was supervising. Although Merlin praises Roxy, Charlie, and Eggsy for their ingenuity with the pipes and mirror, he points out that the group as a whole failed due to lack of teamwork. 
leading to the tragic drowning of one recruit, Amelia. Valentine and Gazelle have a dinner meeting with the Scandinavian Princess Tilda and the Scandinavian Prime Minister. While Valentine explains his proposal for managing climate change, the PM supports the idea, but Tilda considers Valentine to be insane. Tilda exits the scene and alerts the guards. Gazelle swiftly takes action, using her prosthetic legs to eliminate the guards and hold Tilda captive. In the meantime, the recruits engage in further training by taking on the task of individually training a group of puppies. Eggsy finds himself paired with a small pug that proves to be a bit stubborn in following commands. Despite the challenges, Eggsy develops a fondness for the pug and decides to name it JB in honor of Jack Bauer. When Harry regains his strength, he, Merlin, and Eggsy uncover the shocking truth about Arnold's demise. He had a chip implanted in his neck that caused his head to explode. A similar discovery is made when they find the Scandinavian Prime Minister with a matching scar under his ear, indicating the presence of the same implant. Merlin traces the source back to Valentine, the mastermind behind these sinister acts. Eggsy marvels at Valentine's cunning as he shares a video of Valentine's plan to distribute free SIM cards worldwide. Suspicions also arise regarding Valentine's possible involvement in the mysterious vanishings of various world leaders and celebrities, including Iggy Azalea. Determined to uncover more about Valentine's nefarious intentions, Harry assumes a covert identity to infiltrate Valentine's estate. During a casual meal of McDonald's, Harry and Eggsy bond over their shared love for James Bond movies. Despite their efforts, Harry gains limited insights during his investigation, only noticing one of Valentine's associates carrying literature from a controversial church group based in Kentucky. The group consists of Eggsy, Roxy, Charlie, and three of Charlie's pals for their next task which involves parachuting from a plane onto a target. Merlin instructs them to come up with a plan if one of them lacks a parachute. Amid the chaos, one recruit deploys their chute prematurely. Eggsy gathers everyone to link hands before activating each other's parachutes. Merlin releases the rest except for Charlie, leaving only him and Roxy, who deploys her chute at 300 feet. At the tailor's shop, Eggsy reunites with Harry, who guides him into a room filled with an assortment of weapons such as a hand grenade disguised as a lighter, a pin containing poison, and a pair of shoes equipped with a poison blade. Upon returning to the main area, they encounter Valentine and Gazelle, with Valentine trying on a suit from the shop. On their next task, Eggsy, Roxy, and Charlie are assigned to meet a young woman at a club. They are unknowingly drugged by an interrogator. When Eggsy awakens, he finds himself bound to the railway tracks. The interrogator pressures Eggsy to divulge information about the Kingsman organization and Harry, but Eggsy remains silent. Despite the train passing over him, Eggsy is dropped into a small pit. After overcoming this trial, Harry reveals that he and Roxy have succeeded. They witness Charlie facing his own challenge, but he chooses not to sacrifice himself for the Kingsman and is sent home. As their final test, Arthur and Merlin instruct Eggsy and Roxy to shoot their canine companions. Eggsy cannot bring himself to do it, while a gunshot is heard from Roxy's direction. Displeased with Eggsy's decision, Arthur sends him back home. Feeling disheartened, Eggsy drives Arthur's car home and is welcomed by his mother. However, his joy is short-lived as he notices her black eye. Enraged, he heads to the pub to confront Dean. Just as a confrontation is about to erupt, the car mysteriously steers itself to Harry's location. Disappointed by Eggsy's test failure, Arthur discloses that the gun was loaded with a blank round. He also reveals that Amelia is alive and working with the Kingsmen in Berlin. Meanwhile, Roxy is appointed as the new Lancelot. Harry travels to Kentucky, where he attends a hateful church service and listens to the prejudice sermon delivered by the leader. As Harry prepares to leave, Valentine and Gazelle activate a signal from a distance causing people with Valentine's SIM cards in the church to erupt into a violent frenzy. The chaotic scene leads to Harry being compelled to defend himself by shooting, stabbing, bludgeoning, impaling, and explosive attacks on those who try to harm him until he is the sole survivor. Merlin and Arthur observe from their respective locations outside. Harry encounters Valentine and Gazelle waiting for him. Valentine explains that the signal emitted by the SIM cards triggers aggression and suppresses inhibitions. He then retrieves a gun and fatally shoots Harry in the head, causing Eggsy to scream in horror while Valentine himself is shocked by having taken a life. Eggsy returns to the tailor shop to meet with Arthur. 
He brings up Harry's recording of Valentine's confession and raises a toast to Harry with a drink. During this, Eggsy notices an implant scar under Arthur's ear. Arthur was swayed by Valentine's proposal of mass genocide, believing that humanity is a detriment to the planet and wiping them out would be beneficial. Consequently, Arthur has been attempting to persuade world leaders to join Valentine's plan. They toast to Harry's memory, and Arthur and Eggsy share a drink. Arthur attempts to poison Eggsy's drink using his pen, but ends up ingesting the poison himself and dies. Eggsy switches the drinks earlier by distracting Arthur with a question about the paintings, leading to Arthur's demise. Eggsy informs Merlin and Roxy about Arthur's plan, and they set out to thwart Valentine's scheme. Roxy ascends into the sky with two large balloons to target one of Valentine's satellites with a missile, while Merlin and Eggsy sneak into Valentine's base during a party for his collaborators. Posing as Arthur, Eggsy gains entry using his invitation. Roxy successfully launches the missile before one of the balloons bursts, causing her to descend safely with a parachute. Eggsy locates the Scandinavian princess Tilda and proposes a kiss in exchange for saving the world. After effectively preventing the disaster, Eggsy subdues Valentine and hacks into his computer. Charlie appears and holds Eggsy at knife point. In response, Eggsy uses the electric ring on his finger to shock Charlie. Eggsy then rushes back to the plane, dodging and shooting through Valentine's henchmen. Meanwhile, the missile hits Valentine's satellite, delaying the signal from activating. However, Valentine gains control of another satellite closer by using a biometric scanner that Merlin cannot bypass. The signal goes live worldwide, causing people in London, Rio de Janeiro, and New York to engage in violent behavior. Michelle is shown attempting to break into the bathroom, attempting to harm her daughter after receiving instructions from Roxy to lock herself inside, per Eggsy's request. Eggsy finds himself cornered by one of Valentine's gunmen after attempting to return and thwart Valentine's plans. Merlin activates the implants, resulting in the heads of the gunmen and world leaders exploding like fireworks. Eggsy confronts Valentine and Gazelle, briefly diverting Valentine's attention by shooting at them and removing Valentine's hand from the scanner, stopping the signal. Gazelle then bursts through the glass and attempts to attack Eggsy. The two engage in a fight, culminating in a dramatic clash. Gazelle tries to strike Eggsy with her bladed legs, but Eggsy counters by poisoning Gazelle after using the blade in his shoe against her. He then removes one of her legs and throws it at Valentine, impaling him and deactivating every signal permanently. Merlin and Roxy praise Eggsy for saving the world. Eggsy then grabs a bottle of champagne and two glasses, heading to Tilda's place. He plans to have a drink with her, which prompts Merlin to turn off his video monitor. The credits begin, and the scene shifts to Michelle and Dean at the pub. Eggsy arrives in a fine suit and informs Michelle about his new job, which includes benefits like a new home for them away from Dean. Dean tries to intimidate Eggsy again with his gang. Eggsy locks the front door and recites Harry's famous line, Manners mocketh man. Using the umbrella hook, he throws a glass at Dean's face. Then, with a grin, he echoes another one of Harry's statements. Are we just going to stand around? Or are we going to fight? Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you again soon. Take care.